Welcome, I am Emir, and let's look back in hindsight. Dante Basco is remembered by my generation as Zuko, or maybe Zuko. I haven't seen Avatar. Not that Avatar, though I haven't seen that one as well. I digress. Dante Basco is remembered by my generation as Zuko, or Zuko, and by the generation before me as Rufio. That one I've seen. But I don't remember, strangely. I remember him not for those roles though, but for one, as the main actor in the debut. The debut? Eh, Pinoy ako eh, the debut. A Filipino-American film from the early 2000s, which he stars with Manoy, Eddie Garcia, and Tirso Cruz III. Two actors I've talked about in this show before. And two, I remember Dante Basco. Well, you're watching the review for that show right now. American Dragon Jake Long is about a New York teenager named... Hello, Captain Obvious. He's a dragon in training, under his grandfather Lao Shi and animal guardian Fu Dog. Jake must balance his life as an ordinary human, dealing with school, a Mr. Crocker type character obsessed with magical creatures, and his relationship with his family, friends, and his crush and later girlfriend Rose. He must balance that, and, as he put it in the theme song of season 2, I'm the magical protector of the NYC, you heard? Yeah, I know, I can't rap. Jake must also deal with two sets of enemies. One, the huntsman and his apprentice hunts girl. Gee, I wonder who that is. And two, the dark dragon. Unlike the earlier Disney Channel shows I talked about, Dave the Barbarian and After, American Dragon Jake Long. Man, that's a mouthful. This show is serious and story-driven. There's an arc, or two of them, not just random stories. Yet, season one is full of episodes, even two-parters, which are side stories. They're not bad, but... Let's just say this isn't Teen Titans. Speaking of Teen Titans, why do I get the feeling Jake Long was greenlit just so Disney could have its own Teen Titans? I can't get that feeling out of my head considering the Season 2 redesign, which is more anime-like. Not anime though, because not Japan, apparently. The finale... Hong Kong Longs even seems to be a response to the empty, unsatisfying mess called Things Change. Uh. American Dragon, yes, the full name is a mouthful, was a product of its time. Where'd you guess the magical creature's idea comes from? Even Professor Rotwood, a teacher who claims to be an expert on magical creatures, but knows shit about them, is just like Crocker, except he's less nutty. Nothing is original. Nothing comes from nothing. Yet the show is still its own thing. You get reminded that the show is set in New York. A lot. A lot. You know, strangely, the New York depicted here is bland, just ordinary. After seeing this show, I've never dreamed of going to New York, even though a lot of my friends brag about it and post their pictures there on social media. I don't know, Jake Long just desensitized me from the magic of New York. But again, I digress. This show reminds you that it is set in New York. A lot. A lot. You think the buzz on Maggie's Fantasious is bad? Just wait till you hear about the Amdrag in the his house. Holla! Aw, man! 
I'm glad season two cut the slang talk. Except for the oh man and making jokes out of that. Season one just had too much fun with slang. Food dog throws me off sometimes. John DiMaggio or John DiMaggio is a talented voice actor. You can easily distinguish what character he's playing just by listening to his voice. When I hear Draken, I see Draken. When I hear Brother Blood, I see Brother Blood. When I hear Foo Dog, I see Jake the Dog. I can't say why. Because they're both magical dogs. Because they like talking in their own language. Though Foo Dog is more focused. Mostly. While Jake, the dog, not Jake Long, wow, that's confusing. While Jake, the dog, is more carefree, dare I say it childish. Maybe. I have to rewatch Adventure Time. It's been a while. Season 2 is more story heavy than Season 1. Less side trips. I did like the Back to the Future like episode, though. Cliche. But again, nothing is original. Season 2 was more straight to the point. If the focus is not on the two arcs of the show, then the focus is on character development. I like the relationship between Jake and Haley. She's not just Little Miss Perfect can't be wrong. Unlike younger siblings in, say, Lloyd in Space, or in live-action Disney Channel shows of the same era. Yes, I'm foreshadowing. Also, Healy was voiced by Pim Diffie from Phil of the Future. Yes, I want to talk about Phil of the Future someday. I don't mind the animation style changes, but I do mind the fact that the show gave Trixie and Spud love interests. They don't lead to anything and don't contribute to the overall plot. Okay, that's better than dreaming about getting together with a ski lift. I just don't like how Spuds turned out, coming out of nowhere. Speaking of coming out of nowhere, meet numbers 88 and 89, whose existence at least makes sense. The Huntsman has to keep an eye on Hunts Girl, for reasons I will not spoil here. There was no need to make the intimidating Hunts clan a joke with these clowns. But hey! The network had to give their star, the star of their greatest anime ever, or not, more gigs, I guess. Just like spoilers, Miley Cyrus. Don't worry, the star of the best anime ever, so I'm told, would have a better remembered anime, which is not forgotten, so I won't cover it here. Is it anime if it's not Japanese made? If the Japanese use that word to refer to any animation, regardless of who made it? Anyway, what's with me and digressing today? I also don't like how Grandpa became short-tempered, always yelling in Mandarin in Season 2. I prefer the wise and calm Grandpa in Season 1, always using those proverbs. Because of this change in character, he seemed to have changed voice actors, even if there was no such change. Huh. So there's a lot to not like in Season 2, and it's not the animation style. But Season 2, to its credit, is a logical continuation of Season 1. They're the same characters, dealing with more mature themes. Well. As mature as the House of Mouse can get. Certainly no clowning around when compared to Season 1. The most memorable episode for me and my sibling is Season 1's Act 4 Scene 15. Not only because of its importance in the whole Jake Rose arc, guess which arc is that, but also because of the line, quote, I'm dying Egypt, dying. I hear only importune death a while, a many thousand kisses, the poor last I lay. 
up thy lips. Unquote. We used to quote that a lot. Can't say anything more without spoilers. Go check the entire show out and let me know what you think by commenting on the YT page of this video. Also, Joe Bros, this was my introduction to them. When you look me in the eyes, flashbacks. Please like and share this video across social media. Subscribe and ring the bell to be instantly notified of the next episodes of this continuing look back on forgotten Disney Channel cartoons of the 2000s. Check out the other Balik Tanaw slash in hindsight videos. They're in English or have English subtitles. Support the show on PayPal, on Patreon, and on Brave Rewards on Brave Browser. Thanks to my sibling G-G Arts for my avatar. Check out her work and support her by clicking the links on the description. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.